So how does Nico, one of the world's best players, lock down the A side of cash? Well, he does it with a variety of factors. He'll get aggressive with his teammates, aggressive by himself, great utility usage, nades, mollies, smokes, he's great at using all of them. And the best thing about all this is most of it's done solo by himself or with one mate, usually in Carrigan. So you don't need one friend in the game with you and you can implement most of the stuff yourself just into your MM games or your pugs or whatever you're playing. Team games as well, doesn't matter, it's going to work no matter what. So first thing I want you to notice in this clip is the fact that he runs straight past the truck area and runs into this position. And you notice he hears Dupree's footsteps. That's one of the great things about that position right there, waiting for the smoke off. And that's a very great little simple thing you can throw in. If you hear those footsteps come to the A main when you run to forklift, smoke it off, and then nade behind the boxes like so. And there goes a third of Dupree's health. A really great grenade, especially with the armor on Dupree's back. But what happens if Nico doesn't hear anything in A main? Well, often he just jiggles it until there's some other pressure on some point in the map where he feels like he might have to rotate or reposition or if squeaky door opens or something. In this particular round, you see there's a lot of pressure towards mid, so he decides to smoke it off and potentially help his teammates out there. It doesn't actually end up being the thing, but you can see that's the kind of thought process that comes through as to when he actually decides to smoke it off if he does push up towards forklift like we saw in that first round as well. Let's get into some more aggressive A main control and talk about what Nico does and how his utility directly relates to each other. So straight away he throws this flash into A main, you might be thinking, well, that's not really a great flash is it, I mean it's not really a pop flash. But the idea of this is to force any player to this box area, because I want you to think about yourself, if this flash comes in towards A main, what are you doing? You're going to take cover behind the only piece of cover in A main and try and shoot anyone who tries to push in with that flash. However, that's exactly where Nico wants you, you can see he's bouncing a Molotov off this back wall, similar to that grenade we saw through the smoke, and that's going to pop right here behind the box area. So that's going to flush you out of position, which you're most likely going to take after seeing the flash. And you can see one more flash comes in and they're straight into A main. Look at where Nico's crosshair is. It's behind the box area. He knows that you're going to be forced backwards with this Molotov coming in. And he also knows that he doesn't have a teammate or the T set. We don't have a teammate trying to help out because all of Meister is mowed off the back of A main so no one can potentially help out their teammates. There's a very simple double flash, double Molotov combo to take full control of A main. And as I said, just one mate needed. There is a third player in Carrigan actually throws the flash later on, but you can often just throw your own flash into the back of A main, forcing the player to turn away. You don't actually need this third player here. If you actually look at one of my earlier videos on this exact same topic, Nico on the A side of Cash, you can yeah, see some other examples of them doing very similar things. It's a 10 month old video, one of my first videos I made, but still uh, one that you seem to like. So that's why I'm remaking it here. Another important thing to note is the fact that how confident Nico is that no one's going to come into A main, it's very hard to retake A main with that smoke off. And all he's going to do is just re-smoke it off with this timing coming in. And then what it does is obviously just deny map control and you can see it ends up being a great crossfire from Olofmeister and Nico. Olofmeister can basically clean up because they decide to concentrate on the A main area. And you can really see the pressure it put on to the Renegades. They thought they're probably in A main here, that's why all the players came rushing out of the squeaky door looking at a main where Nico actually was, but all of mice is in a great position to crossfire that and ends up being a really strong hold in the end. Now as with everything CS, you want to have more than one way to do it if possible, we're going to mix things up, you want to stay unpredictable, and this is exactly, exactly the same flash we saw later on from Kerrigan. You see Nico's just going to go straight away, no Molotovs this time. Notice Olive Meister's commitment as well, just running straight over uh, the, the Molotov thrown by Astralis, trying to gain a main control. And you can see they just take it out straight away. Another thing I want you to notice, just more and more, I'm just going to say it's over and over and over again. Stay unpredictable if possible. After this A main control, you see Nico repositioning differently again, this time towards the forklift area. And you can see always differentiating where he's going to play. It's going to be hard for anyone to predict how they're going to be playing this. Different game, of course, in this one, but again, teams watch demos, especially at this level of play. You want to be unpredictable. Great angle from Nico when he knows he has all of Meister locking down A main. That quad, oh, that forklift angle, sorry, is a very strong one as well. So if maybe A main's not really your thing, you don't want to get aggressive towards there, you can always get aggressive in towards the squeak here. This is a great flash by Carrigan for Nico to go in. Notice the timing on the clock as well, they wait for when a player would be getting comfortable over there towards the squeaky area. This is just a great pop flash. There's no actually kill in this one, as you see Az is backing away, you can see his x-ray there. But again, in that other video I'm going to link, I'm going to put the card there again if I let me do it twice. There's actually a clip of him getting a kill in this, I couldn't find a recent one from them. But again, it's a very great, just a great pop flash, great way to catch a player off guard and potentially get a pick for your team. Let's talk about playing on the side itself now. This is where all the kills come in, so those of you that just like to see frags are going to be a little bit happier now. So first thing I want to talk about is actually the Molotov used by Nico in this scenario. If you are playing behind this red box here and a take comes in, he's throwing a Molotov like so rather than into the squeaky door area. So you can see a lot of players will try and bounce it or 
solely try and block off squeaky so there's no way for him to go but i want you to look at how nico's molotov spread in this one it's spread to basically almost cover this whole choke point here and this is very important because obviously the t side's going to be struggling to actually take the side itself if they have to wait eight seconds for this molotov to fade because they're not going to run through their own smoke that's very unlikely so they've basically got no avenues left unless they want to try and jump up over the top and so that's just a great Molotov to throw in every now and then, rather than actually fully mollying the squeaky door itself. We just throw it a little bit short and block off any rotations for the T side to actually try and take the site. And you can see on this one, Flash comes through, but they have to wait. They end up smoking it off themselves, trying to extinguish it. You can see JKS had to use his smoke. And here comes the frags. There you go. That's what you've been waiting for, isn't it? And yeah, that's just a great Molotov to throw in. One that I think a lot of players don't actually use in one way, that I actually think is a better way to use your Molotov if you're playing behind the red box area. I thought this round as a whole was a great one to break down. Just Nico getting business done, talking about what happens when an A split comes in towards you. First thing though, just in case you've ever given your teammates position away, this is how you fall away after boosting a player onto that little ledge you fall off so you don't make any potential jump sound or falling sound more likely. And that's just a great way to make sure they don't know where all of my stir is. Then I want to talk about how Nico plays this. This is a great way you can flash your teammate towards the middle. This is a great way to be a supportive player over towards A. You see Karen get some information. And now he's just going about business really and then this is where the mid control could potentially come in or the mid split can come in and notice how Nico reacts right now he knows that Carrigan's been forced off uh, he has no more mid control they know there was pressure there they've got Nifty and Ustilla here and he just commits to one fight he knows that the smoke's going to give him an advantage so in this particular scenario he picks this fight he knows they're probably going to be pushing after taking out Olaf Meister on the boost getting confident trying to get the momentum building and he just faces the smoke in a position where he's not seen from middle and he takes out both the players before swinging back and notice how he's so committed to the fights he's not second guessing himself he goes in going to get the frag this is a mentality you need to have when you're stuck in these hard positions where you're going to peek from multiple angles you just go in get the frag and don't really second guess yourself Another spot Nico likes to get information is this little jiggle here, similar to the one we saw with the smoke grenade out at Forklift, but he'll often just sit here, because obviously someone has to cross here, it's not a very common angle to pre-fire, but it's one he does like to play, and you can reposition, we've seen a couple of rounds already where he likes to throw his utility and get stuff done from behind the red box area, he's very comfortable there, so it's a relatively decent positioning here, obviously with squeaky door closed as well, he has, no one can really sneak out there and try and get a pick off on him. So I'm going to just keep this one moving, fast forward a little bit as things start to go off, and you see as soon as that pick comes off from his teammate on the other side of the map, this is where he decides to use his utility. 40 seconds left in the round, it's going to be just above 20 seconds when that fades, so he knows he's putting himself in a good position already, and that's just some of the thought process behind using your utility. Now what I also want to talk about is how he plays this NBK position. He's not just doesn't get the first kill and then fall away. Notice he's holding a bit of an off angle now when they're likely to be checking towards forklift, but he does consistently jiggle and apply pressure to Astralis, they're not the one peeking him, well they are, but he's also the one peeking them as well. So this first kill comes in, notice how he's he's jiggling, and I mean I'm no expert on aim, but you can see how he's moving in and out, in and out, he's not just sitting there holding another angle letting them peek him, he's applying the pressure trying to jiggle out, get them to stop and start shooting him first, so then he can swing out with the advantage, with the accuracy, and take them out relatively comfortably. Two other spots Liko likes to play, I won't use the demo just for the sake of time, but he likes to play on top of this this crate here behind red, obviously you can see the back of A main here, you can see anyone sneaking up, and also if the take does come in, so imagine there's some kind of smoke coming in here from the T side, you often just bounce off a flash, aim at the bottom of this groove, it's going to flash in, and you can jump up, similar to what we saw all of Meister do out of the corner in one of the other clips here. The second spot he likes to play is up here on the railing, and he likes it because as a T player comes in, it's actually kind of hard to sneak this spot, so you see often a T player will open up the squeaky door, start checking out these angles trying to flash, you actually have to get very thorough and check this angle very thin before you actually see Nico. There's a couple of clips where he actually catches players off guard playing this position. I'll probably edit one in right now just for the sake of it. And yeah, he'll play that position there. And you can see it is quite a thin angle and he can yeah, adjust accordingly. It depends on the certain time, but you can see how thin that angle actually is and the fight does come in. Sometimes if the squeaky door opens, he might smoke off a main, something like so, because he knows the T player is often going to be checking the forklift area first before wide peeking onto him. And then he's very confident, Nico, and he will just take this fight straight out before repositioning to somewhere else. Now we've all seen it a load of times where a team will play retake A, very common pistol round strategy from the f from the truck area, and they won't realise that the A takes actually come in until the bomb's been planted on the A site and the T side's fully taken up after plant positioning. I want to talk about when Nico plays in this position here, a very retake A setup again, but he's close enough to hear the door open. There it is opening, you can hear it faintly hopefully on the video, and you see he backs off, that's his reaction right now, as he wants to hold off this area, and the great thing about this spot is he's trying to deny after plant positioning from the T side, if they're all stuck on the left hand side, it's a lot easier to come in for the retake, 
Also an important thing to note is because he hears this door opening, he has an extra two or three seconds where he can call for his re for his teammates to start rotating. You see they're already on the move as opposed to other clips you've seen where they wouldn't be moving yet because they don't even know that they're out the squeaky door area. But Nico doesn't actually need any help in this one, so I'll let you enjoy the frags. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll catch you in the next video.